everything's gone quiet. Everybody's waiting with bated breath or something like that. It sounds good to me. Welcome to church this morning. We're going to stand and uh, sing a couple of worship songs. So um, uh, let your lungs go as you worship the almighty God.
Lord, we do want to crown you. We want to place you in the place that um, you deserve to be. And we ask, Lord, that this morning we may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth and that we may be able to worship you uh, in an air of gratitude and thankfulness for all that you do to us, all you do for us. And we just ask, Lord, that uh, as we, uh, this is my last time here, we just ask, Lord, that we'll be able to celebrate but we'll also be able to look to the future. And we just ask, Lord, that you'll be with each one of us as we worship you. One of the songs which um, for the last probably six or so years, we've sung a lot and and we sing it with gusto, a lot of gusto. Praise the name. It's got some great, great lines in it. It takes us through um, the Jesus story um, and it really reminds us of who we are and who we are in Christ. I praise the name.
You sing that one and you're sort of short of breath at the end of it, aren't you? Um, Gary's going to read to us uh, from the Bible. Um, were you aware of that, Gary? Yes, yes, he knew that. And the Bible reading comes from uh, Romans and chapter 10 and the first 15 verses. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer for God to the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they were zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not to submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart that is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How, then, can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. What a great passage, eh? And um, it's one of those passages that has been sitting around for me to preach on for a while. Um, And um, I'm sure I'll preach it again, but I'll leave it with you today. Uh, We're going to have a little bit of fun here. We're going to sing a kid's song. And um, we've got some kids here, which is really cool. Um, So we're going to stand up together and we're going to sing This Little Light of Mine. And um, those of you who remember that from earlier days um, can fill in bits and pieces as we go. This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine. Okay.
Oh, that was fun, wasn't it? And I could see people, Lindsay, you were caught, you were doing the actions, you were doing the actions. Lots of fun. Um, this is, um, actually, can I just say that this is a song off Marianne's first EP. Um, <laughs> yeah, Marianne did an EP last year, did you know that? No. Pandemic's got in the way of everything, didn't they? Anyway, this is a great song and um, it's um, about being still before God. I don't know what um, what your uh, week's been like, but um, oh, pedal lap. Uh, mine's been bizarre. That's the only way I can say it. There's um, an element of excitement in me for what comes before and what we're moving into, but we have no idea what that is. So there's this excitement of seeing what God's got for us, but there's also huge sadness for you know we're not going to be doing this in front of you again now. So I just want to say thank you to the people who have sent cards and, and letters and stuff and emails and the people who have come um, from all over the place this morning. And I do appreciate uh, so many people's uh, well wishes and good wishes over the last couple of days. As I said, it's, it's a bit weird. I've been moving my office bit by bit. It's not going to be all finished, I tell you, tell you that now, but there's boxes everywhere. Um, I'm not real sure that Keith giving me a lend of all of the boxes or giving me the boxes was a good thing because I'm, I'm a bit sore and sorry for myself today. But it's all happening and it's all going out. And uh, I do want to say thank you to the church uh, for your support over the years. And we, we've, done some, we've done some weird stuff and different stuff, but as well as that, we've been able to support each other over eight and a half years and it's been very special uh, for each of us. Uh, I'm going to pray for us now. 
Lord and Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this bunch of people, for the bunch of people who were here when I first came and some of them have moved on, some of them have passed away and, and some of them are in different places. Lord, I just thank you and praise you for the way that you have used these people in my life, um, but as well as that, how you've been able to use me uh, to encourage them, to build them up and to be part of their life as well. Lord, I just pray for the church as it, as it moves forward. There's um, elements of tension, I suppose, that uh, will need to be worked through. Uh, there's also elements of um, unsureness about what happens next week. And But I know, Lord, that there are uh, some fabulous speakers coming to share with uh, this bunch of people over the next couple of months. Lord, I ask for amazing blessing on this church. I ask that you will bless it in ways that perhaps they've never seen before and never understood before. And I just ask that, that you will move not only in the church in its corporate sense, but also, Lord, in individuals. We just thank you, Lord, for the way that you have moved us together. And now that there's a, an element of um, separation, even though we'll be still staying in town, we just ask, Lord, that our time together will be cherished it certainly will be on my part. And we just ask, Lord, that we'll be able to continue to bless each other through prayer and through acknowledgement when we do see catch up with each other. Lord, I ask for the people who have been part of this church for many years, that you'll bless them wherever they are. If they are ministering or they are serving in other churches, I ask, Lord, that the preparation that you gave them uh, partly here, that will be utilised by you and your kingdom. And Lord, that's the thing that is significant, the development of your kingdom. And we just ask, Lord, that each of us will be part of that process and that as we move into the future, that we'll be able to find where we fit into that development process. Lord, for people who at the moment can't be here for whatever reason, some people are sick, uh, we just ask, Lord, that you'll be with them. Also, Lord, we ask for those people who uh, have not come back because they're not confident to come back to church, we ask, Lord, that you will be with them as they deal with uh, those fears and those issues, those mental issues. Uh, physical and mental um, issues that are there within that. Lord, but we just ask that you will be with us in some very significant and real ways. And I thank you and I praise you for this congregation and its input into my life and to Mary Ann's life and both Jackson and Flynn as well. Lord, we thank you in your name. Amen. As well as that, this is the last of the Bathurst Baptist Church uh, video links um, tonight at six o'clock will be the last one of those. But let me tell you that there's an option and there's an alternative. And um, from next Sunday, Veranda Church Project, which is a ministry that Gary and I have put together just for part of this sort of type of stuff, will be doing a service at, uh, but it will be released at midnight on Saturday. So if you're really, really keen, um, you can um, get up at, there's a reason for that, so people can utilise it throughout the day. So um, uh, they'll be available on the Veranda Church po uh, Project Facebook page and the Veranda Church Project YouTube channel and there's also the other program we've done which is called What, which was started for our young people. Um, it will also be on the Veranda Church Project What YouTube channel. You've got all that? Yeah, it looks like you've got all of that. But it's something we believe that we want to continue. The idea is that if the church wants to continue to use that, you can just save it. Someone can just uh, post it on the, um, on the Bathurst Baptist Church uh, Facebook page and you get to utilise um, the stuff that we're doing. And that's part of the process of what we're doing. Um, it was what I was going to be doing on my fifth day, you know, I dropped my wage to four days a week and that's what we were doing there and it seems to have become all of life for me at the moment. So please feel free to utilise that. We also make it available to all churches around the place and some, place, some churches have been using our stuff out west, which we are really, really stoked about because that's a big part of my heart to support churches uh, in rural settings. Um, remember that? Veranda Church Project Facebook page or YouTube channel. And thank you uh, for people who have encouraged us to continue to do that. We do appreciate that. We're going to um, we're going to just spend some time listening to Gary and uh, Marianne. Uh, they're going to sing to us a prayer song. Uh, and someone's actually requested this. Um, 
It's Oh Lord, You're Beautiful, written by Keith Green, uh, and they're going to sing it to us. So use this as a prayer um, as we go into a quieter period of time. song and it's uh, 50 years since Keith Green passed away. Are you aware of that? Um, a great uh, Christian music forerunner in a lot of ways and there's a lot of his music as is evidence there we're still using as worship um, in our services. We're going to have our tithes and our offering but while we do that uh, Gary's going to sing to us um, it is well with my soul, so feel free to join him. Um, we'll stand partway through the, the song, um, but um, the offering will be taken now. Like a river attend my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my love thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul those satan should buffet though trials should come let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood 
for my soul It is well It is well With my soul With my soul It is well It is well With my soul My sin Oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Oh Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumps shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well. It's a bit weird today. It's been uh, a little bit bittersweet. We had such a fabulous fun time in practice. Thank you for Margaret to, um, for representing all of the other musos that we've played with. And when you think about it, there's been so many people who uh, go to make up uh, just a morning service, let alone keep everything else in the church uh, happening and running. So um, thank you to Margaret and um, all of the other musos that have been involved as well. Um, and it's, um, as I said, bittersweet. Uh, looking forward to what God has for us, yet realising that there's a whole support network which changes um, over the next couple of months, that's for sure. So thank you for that. And I wanted to share with you... Um, Something about beautiful feet. Some people have mentioned my shoes. Okay. Um, there's a story to this. Marianne and I went shopping for her boots, which she is wearing today. And then I saw these shoes and I liked them. So we both got shoes that day. But it's stuck in my mind about beautiful feet ever since. Okay, so um, that's part of the reason. And I noticed Sam's got boots on today. She's got beautiful feet today as well. Uh, Day, what have you got on? Anything important? Uh, some cool boots as well. Thank you, mate. Um, so, uh, and some of you else, uh, some of you other people might have um, beautiful feet. I should have actually advertised that we're going to have beautiful feet someday. Um, but this passage is significant to me. It is very important to me in, in who I am, and it's what I want to leave with you. Uh, and we're picking it up from uh, verse 12. And I have to ask, what do we think this means in a, in a modern context? Uh, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Okay? What does that mean? What are we thinking about when we read that? Because it's all very, very nice just to read it and read through it in our daily devotions, but if we don't think about it, if we don't actually think what it means to us, then the Bible becomes just another book 
What does this say to us? There's no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. There's a couple of things in here. No distinction is um, a significant term. Significant. So in other words, us as Gentiles are not distinguished as different from Jews. And in that day, that was significant, hugely significant, that we are all in the same boat. And, And Paul is saying to the Romans, you Roman Christians are not differentiated against differently than the Jews are. And for them at that stage, absolutely huge. It goes on. No, it doesn't go on. There's another passage in in Galatians that says there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That is a big verse for where we're at today in our modern society. It's enormous. That means that Jew and Greek, we've talked about slave and free. In other words, worker and worker and boss, basically. And male and female, we're all on the same footing. You might employ a female pastor, and that's totally okay because there's no distinction. Absolutely for you are one in Christ Jesus. But how would, we, how would we create those distinctions these days? And what have we done? Well, there's no Baptist and Anglican. We're Christian. Huge significant point. There's no worker and boss. There's no male or female. What, what about something? No poor or rich or educated and uneducated. We're all in the same thing. Something that came up this week in a discussion, does that mean there is no... Straight and gay. Oh, I saw some of you cringe then. That was an interesting reaction. That's really difficult, isn't it? No, it's not. You know why? Any of those people can call on the name of Jesus. We're not talking about, as the Salvation Army is, whether they can, whether a gay person can be an officer or a minister. We're not talking about that at all. What we're talking about is who can become a Christian? Who can say to Jesus, I want to be yours? Everybody. Everybody can do that. And let's be really, really careful that we don't place distinction. Is becoming a Christian that simple? Yeah, but we make it very difficult. And we make it very difficult for the post-decision process, don't we? We make it difficult for the next little bit. After they've become Christians, we sort of we put this expectation on them that they'll all of a sudden everything will change like that. Now, I know Christian guys who have tr- struggled with addiction for 30 years, they've been Christians for 30 years and they still struggle with addiction. Shouldn't it all be gone? Why? Why should it all be gone? Why should our struggles go away? Our struggles don't go away just because we're Christians. I'm sure of that, I know that, because I have struggles as well. Yeah, so they don't go away. It's just that Jesus is with us as God is with us. And, And part of the thing is that we have this expectation that people become Christians and they end up like us. And sometimes what we try to do is make little us's. Can you imagine this church full of little Johns? Little bald fellows. Little bald stubby fellows. No, it's too much for me to think about, let alone you. We don't want to make more of me, we want to make more of Jesus. And we've got to be really, really careful that we don't try to turn new converts into us's. Is that a term? I'm glad Marianne was actually out getting a drink of water because I'm not sure that the grammar's right and she would probably pick me up on that. But so the thing is, and the, the interesting thing is in early, early Christian missions, well, even up until um, probably 150 years ago, what happened was most of the missioners tried to turn... Um, the people into Christians like them. So in Africa, you can still see it, 
there's these guys who are out in the middle of Africa in the hot sun and they've got black pants and white shirts and black ties on as they go to church because that's Christian. No, it's not. No, it's not at all. All that does is send them break because black pants and a white shirt and a tie cost them a lot of money. Jesus is really happy with people being themselves. And we've got to be careful not to try and turn them into us because Jesus is, was nothing like us when he was on earth. Let's be realistic. He was from the Middle East. He wore sandals and probably wore a robe and he had dark skin and he was a Jew. Now, if Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever, guess what? He's still a Jew. He's still got dark skin. He doesn't look like me at all. And he's very lucky about that. You've got to remember we make Jesus the focus of not only our church but of our evangelism and of our life hugely significant for us to think about. So what do the people we attract to this church over the next 10 years, what do we want them to look like? Not like me, that's for sure. But more like you or more like Jesus? <laughs> so if you have an influx of people who are wearing sandals and um, robes over the next few weeks, I know what's happened. Actually, if any of you want to try that over the next few weeks, that's fine with me because I don't have to laugh at that. <laughs> but it's intriguing, isn't it? And we go on into the next one. It says, next verse, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. A couple of things here. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I've had the pleasure of being with people when they've been passing away. I don't know whether it's a pleasure or not, but it's an honour. Is that a better way to put it? It's an honour. And I've been with one guy who gave his heart to the Lord probably seven hours before he passed away. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. His grandson, 17-year-old bloke, became a Christian two days later. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Heroin addicts, prostitutes, when I, you know, when I used to work with Youth for Christ and stuff, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I've had the pleasure of seeing a wide gamut of that. A wide gamut of that. Some of you have had the pleasure of seeing your own kids make decisions for Jesus. I had the pleasure of seeing my boys make a decision at the Revive Youth Night here. And a lot of kids made a decision that night. But for me, that was just, whoa. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord can be saved, will be saved. Not can be, will be. Sorry, I had to slip up there. It is us who have the desire to change people to be like us. Stop it. We need to have the desire that people be like Jesus. More and more. More and more as he goes along. Now, there's a thing on, and I've written it here by mistake. You know, the standard for a relationship with Jesus is the relationship with Jesus. Symbols. Now, I made the slip of the tongue there, but you've probably seen the ad on television with a little meerkat. Symbols. Yes. That's simple. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, there's things that are going to happen after that, okay? People grow spiritually. Things change in their life. And I know from when I became a Christian, it was really for me, I didn't want to go to hell. But after a period of time, I grew and I became very much more in love with Jesus, very much more aware of who God was over a period of time. So I think within that we are saying whoever... Whoever calls on the name of the Lord can, will be saved, yes. The process after that, and we've got to let people process. Got to let people process. Because some of the people that we're ministering to now have never been to church, Sunday school, Christian endeavour. Um, even some of the kids now are not even getting scripture. Now, that's a total travesty when you think about it. Kids aren't getting to hear about Jesus. Yes, that's true. So we're going to have a much bigger period of discipleship and that's where we come in.
we disciple people. We don't save them. We are part of the discipleship process. But my heart goes out to people in our community here that don't know about Jesus. They may have heard him at Christmas or Easter. This is where this passage touches me. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they've never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they're sent? Simple explanation of Christian responsibility. Go and do it. How do they call on Jesus unless someone tells us? Now, do you know people who don't know Jesus? Have you got a close relationship with people who don't know Jesus? Who tells them? The preacher? Sorry, you're not going to have a pastor for a period of time. You can't expect me to do it. It falls on you. Who's going to tell them? You. Us, if you want to put it that way. Who will tell them? Yeah, is that us? Or do we actually fit that into our church um, church structure to say these are the people who we train to do this stuff? Yeah, I think we have to. Why? Because we're not getting trained in that. Who remembers Christian Endeavour? Okay, be honest. Um, some of you have got no idea what I'm talking about, but that's quite okay. Christian Endeavour was a fabulous program and it actually taught young people to do things. How? By making them do it. And, we, and, and that's where a lot of our generation learnt to do these things. And it taught you how to, a simple process to share Jesus with people. Where do we learn it now? Now, some, some youth groups are great and they teach it. Other than that, you don't learn it. We don't learn it. So there's less and less people sharing Jesus because they don't know how to do it. Yeah. They're not confident to do it because they haven't been through the process of having it shared with them. Does that affect us too? When was the last time we shared Jesus with someone? I asked this with a bunch of people. Actually, it was a car camp about seven or eight years ago, something like that. And I asked some of them, when was the last time you shared about Jesus? And one guy was totally honest. He owned a 27 Chev and he said, nearly as long as my Chev is, nearly as old as my Chev is. And now I knew he wasn't actually that age. But what he was saying was, I haven't shared Jesus for a long time. And he would be older than most of us here. When was the last time you shared Jesus? It's interesting, isn't it? You see... How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? Just got to tell them. How are they to believe in him in whom they've never heard? Okay, there's a big theological question there, but we're not dealing with that today. If they've not heard, what happens? Think about that. If they haven't had Jesus explain to them, what happens to them in the end? Think about it. How are they to hear without someone preaching? This is perhaps a group setting. This is perhaps where Revive Youth Night comes in. All those kids got to hear, some of them for the first time. And I, are you, were you aware that on one of those youth nights, 104 kids made decisions for Jesus? Are you aware of that? That's huge. And a lot of them are spread around Bathurst and the Central West continuing to be involved. See what? This church has participated in the telling to those kids. The churches that they go back to are participating in the discipleship. Be proud of that. Be absolutely proud of that. The other thing is the word preaching, uh, we kind of get the concept that preaching is me being up here talking to you, but in the Greek the preaching word just means proclaiming. So you can do that proclamation um, if you're at coffee with someone, if you're out riding a bike. And I know I shared my faith on the push bikes 
Um, I made sure I got the guys, you know, 50 k's out of town so they couldn't get away from me uh, and then shared Jesus with them. Um, but the whole thing with that is, the whole thing with that is preaching is not a profession. Proclaiming is a lifestyle. And we've got to We've got to get the habit of opening our mouths and saying, this is why I believe. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? I believe all churches should have a process of identifying people who can be involved in mission. We've sent some people off to Bible college at different times for gap year and for different musical things and all kinds of stuff like that. Be proud of that. We're sending people. That's the idea. We prepare people and then we let them loose. And it's what you're doing with me. Okay? You're letting me loose. I have no idea what God's going to do with me and that should scare the community as well as me because God's going to use me. And I I get a bit scared by that sometimes. But God's going to use me. But I want God to use each of us in whatever setting Because I believe we're all sent. Each and every one of us are sent to communicate Jesus to people. Absolutely. Love it. Because that means that the pastor, the preacher, the minister are not in ministry alone. We are in ministry together. And we always have been. We always have been. Now, the end of this this um, section is, is fabulous. And, and dig this next bit. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Now, I know this is weird, but this is a Jewish blessing. Okay? A Jewish blessing. The, another one is um, shalom to your bowels. You What? The Jews' concept was that the centre of being was the bowels. <laughs> so, so the concept there is they want you to be blessed to your centre of being. Now, I haven't used that blessing since I've been here, okay? Um, it's probably not a good idea that I use it to bless you to your bowels uh, or shalom to your bowels. Um, and I won't be using it on the door at the door of the way out, I'm sure. But the thing is here, it says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news. Now, there's a reason why beautiful feet are a blessing. Because people in those days spent a lot of their time in the dirt, wandering around with sandals on or bare feet. So their feet got dirty. And a beautiful foot was one that was clean and had perfume on it. In other words, they were anointing. Do you remember the woman that anointed Jesus' feet? That's the concept. Make someone's feet feel important. This is a blessing saying, I want you guys to all be important because you share the good news about Jesus with people. It's a blessing, a blessing. Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to be blessed by God? Tell people about Jesus. It's promised. It's promised. Absolutely. And does this church want to be blessed in the future? It will be if it tells people about Jesus. Absolutely. And my hope and prayer is that you people will be blessed abundantly absolutely hugely, no matter what is before us, that you will be blessed and God will use you lot to extend his kingdom. Bless you. This is a song that is usually significant to all of us up here, uh, but I want to leave it with you and I want you to remember uh, the faithful love of Jesus.
I think something's happening. I have uh, a great privilege to, uh, on behalf of the church, to pray for the Armstrong uh, family and, and uh, there's a few other things that are going to happen as well. Will I do that? Do you want to say something? Yeah. John, Mary Ann, Jackson and Flynn. That sounds loud. <laughs> Life is a journey. It has many turns and bends along the way. Sometimes the view from the top is clear, exact and exhilarating. And other times it's shrouded in mist, damp and misery. This I know by Poet Unknown says... I do not know what next may come along my pilgrim way. I do not know this next year's road, not see beyond today. But this I know, my Saviour knows, the path I cannot see. I can trust his wounded hand to guide and care for me. I do not know what may be mine of glowing skies or rain. I do not know what may be form of pleasure or of pain, but this I know, my father sends my sunshine and my shade, and naught that comes from out his love can make my soul afraid. I do not know what may await or what the next year brings, but with a glad salute of faith, I hail its opening wings. For this I know, that in my Lord shall all my needs be met and I can trust the heart of him who has not failed me yet. My prayer is that as you move from leading our community that you will see God's hand directing your path. As your health improves and your vision clears, may you see from the mountaintop the clear and exhilarating future God has stretched out before you. Thank you for being part of our journey. There is a card at the, at the table. If you haven't signed it, um, you're welcome to. And if you'd like to write a message, there are some pieces of paper up there that you can write a message on as well. Thank you for your contributions as well. Stay out there for the time being. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll just get uh, the seek and seek right here. Let's uh, all join in prayer as we pray for the Armstrong family. Our Father and our God, we thank you as a church for the privilege of knowing Jackson and Flynn and Mary Ann and, and John. Father, we, we pray for Jackson and Flynn. We have seen them grow up into their teenage years and become young men. We have seen them make friends and support each other and their friends and show concern for members of our congregation. We have been encouraged that we have observed them worshipping with their family and we've seen their own contribution to the life of the church and we've seen them grow in Christian maturity. We thank you, Father, for their lives, their Christian lives. And we know that they have found a place in the hearts of many in our congregation. Father, we thank you, Father, for Mary Ann, for the solid Christian character that she has, for the unfailing and consistent support that she has given John. We thank you for the sacrifices she has made to enable John to carry out his calling to ministry. And so, Father, we thank, we thank you for the gifts and talents that you have given her, 
for her faithful use of those gifts to facilitate our, our music worship and so encouraged us to be, and, uh, and she has been a blessing to our church. We thank you, Father, for the many other areas of ministries that she has been involved in uh, as she has blessed individuals and uh, the whole church body. Father, for John, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for his ministry here over the past eight or so years, whatever it's been, and we have been blessed. He has been faithful to the call that, uh, that you have placed on him to be a minister of the word here, a pastor, a shepherd of our church. We have been blessed by his use of the gifts uh, of music uh, as he had led, led us in worship. We have been blessed by his passion for evangelism, for his passion for discipleship of others, for the encouragement he's given us to, be, to disciple others. So, Father, we pray for the Armstrong family. We pray for your richest blessing on them so that in the coming months you will refresh each one of them in body and mind and spirit and we know that they will continue to experience the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives, encouraging and guiding them and revealing your and that you may reveal your plans to them as a family and individuals. Father, we do know that you have mighty plans for each one of them, so we pray that you will bless them now in Jesus' name. I suppose I should say something, um, but you've already heard me talk a lot, haven't you? Look, I just want to reiterate uh, what I've said before, that this has been a, an amazing eight and a half years. I've learned stuff. Um, I certainly never thought that um, I'd passed a, a bunch of people through a pandemic, uh, and that was a huge learning curve for us all, I think. Uh, but thank you for your support and your love, you know, particularly through the trials we've been through uh, medically uh, as a family over the last eight and a half years, everything from Bell's palsy to cancer to um, seizures to everything that's gone on in our family. Um, you've always been there to support us. So we want to just encourage you, uh, rest assured I will be continuing to pray um, for you well and truly on into the future. Um, so thank you and um, we, we just thank you for... Uh, even I uh, thank Sally for um, apple crumble for dessert today. Um, for so many things like that, which have been very, very significant to us as, as a family, that people have cared for us practically uh, as, as well. Um, so thank you, one and all. Thank you, each of you, uh, for the input that you've had into our lives. And uh, we'll never, certainly never forget you. And um, you'll see us around for a period of time, that's for sure. Thank you. Bless you. A benediction. May the Lord bless you, each one of you, and each one of you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen.